Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home with a certified car nut. Today, I'm in one of my favorite places on earth, Jay Leno's shop. Jay's always got such cool stuff. I never know what he's going to be working on. So it, it, it's always a thrill for me, too. It, it, there he is. My, there's Jay. I don't know how he gets in here. He's like a ghost. Well, oh, hey, Dennis. <laughs> I actually had a key made. Good oh. to see you. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's always a pleasure, Jay. It's always a pleasure. What, uh, so what's new, man? Uh, well, we, we just been making a body for this. You may have seen this a couple of years ago. It was wooden, had, wasn't had it? had a big wooden box. Yeah, yeah. It didn't have a body on it. Um, and uh, my friend Robin, uh, he, uh, he kind of hand-formed this whole thing. It, it's not based on anything. It's just sort of an uh, interpretation of what a mid-30s Rolls would look like. It's a 34 Rolls chassis. This is the uh, Spitfire engine out, right. of the, uh, out of the fighter plane. Uh, so we went with just kind of a fastback original design, using all the styling cues from the from the 30s. So it looks it looks period. It'll it'll be cool when it'll be done. It'll be black with red and. Well, it's such a monstrous engine, and, and the Rolls chassis is fine with holding something that big. It seems, <laughs> to seems to be. Seems to be. Seems to be. So we're putting a Bosch fuel injection on it. And oh man. The whole deal, yeah. What kind of horsepower is that gonna? Uh, hopefully about 1,600, I mm hope. -hmm. Mm -hmm. I live in a hilly area, yeah, so you, you want to be able to get over, need, you know, you, you, know, you get that. stuck on a hill and oh boy, you know, so you want to have that little extra oomph to get you over the top. And uh, next to it is a, is a kind of a unique car. There's a guy named Peter Monteverdi who, uh, who was a Swiss guy. I guess he was born about 1937, 1938. Uh, he's really the only Swiss car manufacturer, and what he would do, uh, he would use Chrysler running gear. It looks very Italian. It does look Italian, but it's really more Swiss. It's, uh, it's a 440 Chrysler with a Chrysler running gear and four speed with uh, European brakes and suspension and his own chassis. These were quite expensive cars. These were just as expensive as a Rolls Royce or not. A, well, yeah, you know, Rolls Royce, Ferrari, Lamborghini. And it's a bit as if you took your, if you took your 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner and you sent it to college in Europe. This is this what would come, come back. back. <laughs> yeah, it'd be sort of a <laughs> more uh, yeah. refined, but, more, more refined, but still a hood under the hood. Yeah, yeah. Here I'll show you. I mean, they it handles pretty nicely because the engine is set pretty far back. It's almost sort of mid-engine, you know. I mean, it's right up under the dash. Uh, the both brake boosters are down under here. Pretty lightweight. It's about thirty-three hundred pounds. This one here was the London show car. Oh, they wow. only built four bodies in this particular style. This is the 375S. That means 375 horsepower speed, S for speed. And uh, geez, it goes great. Well, you know, 16-cylinder Rolls-Royce, a 440 here. You know, with the gas prices and everything today, I mean, it's, it's got to be... Uh, I have the solution you to have? the gas crisis. You do? Yes, sir, Bob. Well, show me the solution. Follow me. Welcome back to My Classic Car. This is the solution. Uh, this was a revolutionary car in its day. This is a 1909 uh, Baker Electric. Where, where's the front end? Uh, that's the great thing about it. It's a bit like driving a phone booth. <laughs> um, I have to say, it's the only car I have that's 100% maintenance-free. I mean, I've never. I mean, I painted it and restored it, but uh, the, the windings are of such high quality. It just doesn't break down. You know, it's the turn of the century. They really wanted to show people how, because people were scared of electricity. Yeah. I mean, it was a frightening thing at the time, you know. Uh, it's a bit like hydrogen is now. People are like, hey, wait a minute. Hit that Hindenburg thing. Yeah, can't you get electric? You know, so the idea, I mean, it, it's such a beautifully put together motor. And although it looks like a carriage, it is a carriage, but it has some high tech ideas for the time. You have leather fenders. See, leather was the carbon fiber of the day. Very kind of light lightest, weight. Yeah, okay. Very lightweight. Um, the, this front window. I mean, well, these open and close. And you have to understand, this is even before the advent of the wind-up window. So what you had to do was you'd, you'd undo these here. These are, uh, if you notice, they're like, whoa, they're like railroad windows. You pull it up like this. Oh, wow. You see, and then you pull it over, and then you kind of put it back down again there. That's cool. But see, these were... That's quite an ornate interior. Well, here was the trouble with electric cars. The idea was... They really appealed to women because at the time, you know, the self-starter hadn't been invented yet. So steam was a hassle. Steam was a hassle and steam was dirty and messy and scary. Uh, you know, auto, regular automobiles, you had to hand crank and bang and set the choke and work the clutch. 
Uh, these were popular as women's shopping cars. So what they did was they really marketed them to women. They made it look like a woman's sitting room. You had mm -hmm. the flowers. You see, you've got see the clock, and there's a makeup. Uh, oh, how nice! You open up, and there's yeah. face powder, and you know makeup, and all. But then the problem was. Well, no man wanted to buy a woman's car. I mean, that, that was the problem with really? it. So consequently, electrics were relegated as women's shopping carts. But this thing went 100 miles on a charge. Uh, at the turn of the century, there were 15,000 of them in New York City. You could drive. There were charging stations all over the city. Really? Yeah. There were 15,000 of these Oh, cars? yeah. They were, they were all over the place. There were a lot of them. I mean, looking like this, looking like the phone calls? Yeah, yeah. And they were really quite... Uh, you know, it's interesting. One day, I was having my house uh, termited. They put the you know the big yeah. tent over. So my wife said, I want to stay at the Beverly Hills Hotel. We never stayed there. And I said, okay, so we'll spend two days at the Beverly Hills Hotel. So I drive this to the Beverly Hills Hotel, and I pull up, and they go, hey, is that Mrs. So-and-so's car? And I go, who's Mrs. So-and-so? She goes, oh, she used to come in and get her hair done every year for almost 50 years, and she would park. In, in one of these. And I said, well, where, where did she? she goes, well, we haven't seen her in a year or two. And I tried, and she had just died. But she had a Baker Electric, and I never found the car. But from like 1935 until almost 2001, she would take this thing to the Beverly Hills Hotel every week to get her hair done. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Now, is it, is it, is it completely it's silent, of course? I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. And does it have a transmission? No. no, no, it's, it's just direct. Right. That's the great thing about electricity is like steam. You have all your torque there. right away. Yeah. yeah. So it'll climb any hill at 23 miles an hour. That, <laughs> that 23 miles an hour is about the top speed. Kind of what it does. And believe me, when you're going downhill with this 23 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> Plenty fast. Plenty fast. Because, because it, 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 it tends to high side. <laughs> it is like driving a phone booth. And you know, my wife loves it because we use this at the holidays to go look at the Christmas lights. And it's the only car I have a with a deer. Good the deer come right up and look in the window. Because there's no smell, there's no sound. Yeah, yeah. And they, you know, if there's deer on the road, we'll stop. And they walk right up. I think it's something about this curved glass. And they go like this, and they look in. <laughs> well, that's not because not my wife. That's, that's that makes it the oh, great. Oh, isn't this great? That's the greatest car we've ever had, yeah, yeah. So, uh, charging stations? Were this is the original the charging, charging station, station here. I, I don't have all the pieces to put it together, but it does have sort of you going to talk, Larry? <laughs> it does have that, that kind of electric. And these are kind of cool. These are the original Thomas Edison batteries. Thomas Edison invented the alkaline battery to double the range of, of, of the, electric cars. Of electric cars. And he did. It just didn't double it enough. It wasn't far enough. But see, what you do is you just you take them, you flush them out, you clean them. Then you put, pour fresh acid in them, and they were good for another two or three years, you know, so you could use these same batteries over and over again, and so you still got the, all the Edison patent information, and you know. Man. Now that's, that's got to be a, a rare piece. See, do not use acid in this battery, you put water in it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Edison, I said acid. <laughs> it's distilled water. Yeah. Wild looking car, and, uh, and you, you, as with many of your cars, you have kind of the original, uh, Yeah, the that's the original stuff. ad. That was quite a racy ad in the day. You see, you got the guy, says, Daddy, get me a baker, but you're not quite clear if it's really her father or some <laughs> creepy congressman. Look at that. <laughs> he, does, he does have that creepy congressman. And look at her little innocent of... face in the window up there. She's kind of... Let you know, me out. <laughs> yeah, it just has that sort of... Uh, <laughs> I'll get you a baker. <laughs> So, so, like, where do you store the batteries for this baby? Well, you saw the Edison batteries. I yeah, just showed yeah. you those. Uh, and that's I can what use those if I want, but I, I've just got modern batteries. I think they fit right in there. Six of them? Uh, here. Six in the front, six, six in, the in the back. Yeah, yeah. And those Edison crates would have taken the place of these. Right, same thing, same thing. Uh, these are deep cycle. These are like you'd use in a golf cart. Or something and they're six, volt, they're six volt batteries. Yeah, yeah. You get more power with six volts. Hmm. More amperage? Uh, I guess so. I'm not a big electric guy. I think, I think it's, yeah, sure, more amperage. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah, he said. Yeah. yeah. Um, deep cycle six batteries, uh, six volts, seem to have more power. So that's why we use them. People look at it and they have no idea how you drive it because you see there doesn't appear to be any. So no, there, there doesn't appear to be a steering wheel. So how, how does one Well, hop in. I'll show you. Hop in. Hop just, in. Okay, so I just, just hop in. Hop in. Slide over. Okay. This is your tiller right here. This is what you steer with. You release your handbrake and you turn your key. There's uh, some gauge one up. Volts. Volts yeah. one up. And away we go. 
Welcome back to my classic car. The bells, I think the bells. Yeah, the bells. I mean, just make that's it. worth worth the price of admission, right? Well, it there. just has that department store, menswear, lingerie <laughs> kind of thing to it, you know. And you keep your eye on your gauge. Isn't it? Plus, you can look down on other cars. You've got that, you do have that kind of superior feel up here. You know? And the nice thing is you can look down on Prius owners with their gas polluting three cylinder, whatever that is, motor. This is electricity only and everything. Even the lights are electric on this. Yeah, yeah, electric lights. And electric lights were a big deal in 1909. Most cars still had gas lamps, so this was all electric. Like when my wife and I go out to eat, I, I park and I just leave the lights on, you know. You know, you can see you really don't want to go much faster. No, this. no, this is probably good enough. And it, it, it is really as tall as, as it is long. <laughs> it is. It is tall. And the suspension is not really uh, <laughs> <laughs> there. <laughs> not really there. See, since we're going downhill, we're, we're using less than a hand. There's no regenerative braking or any of that kind of stuff. Hmm. As usual, Jay let me take the wheel. I mean, tiller, rudder, thingy, whatever. This is a little unnerving, Jay. Okay. It's just the well, you see, suddenly 23 miles an hour is pretty damn scary. <laughs> I will never complain again. This is cool, Jay. Flat out. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm doing the best I can, okay? <laughs> but I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the ride. But it's pleasant. It's you know? great, it's great. When you look at the Christmas lights, it's the best. And actually, after you, you know, after you get onto it, it, it is kind of relaxing. Yeah, it's just a fast jog. I would think as a taxi, it'd be great because you don't go very fast. The meter just keeps yeah, running yeah, and running. Yeah, exactly. That's the advantage. But in the day, this is about a you know, Model T only went 42 miles an hour, and this goes 23. So, so don't forget the roads weren't paved, right? That's even tough to make a hand signal. You kind of reach out around. No, no, <laughs> it's not quite perfected. Yet. <laughs> Still working out center bugs. Because it is top heavy. Oh yeah. Er, er. We're here. We made it. Next week we'll travel to Mount Washington in New Hampshire for Climb to the Clouds. This historic hill climb will put these classic race cars to the test. Plus we'll look at underhood rubber replacement for your ride. So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. This is Jay Leno. Happy motoring. Save the planet. Drive an electric car. <laughs>